I just want to talk about the invisible selfie stick that comes with this Instago 362. Uh, this is one of the commenters I'll put you up here in, in the video. He mentioned that it only works as invisible with the 360 cams. And, you know, that really sucks if it's true. And what I'm finding is that it's true. I can't find another way to process any um, anything with the stick. Otherwise, it's just a stick, right? And I'll have some, some video here. Just playing around with it. Oh, I, why? Why do they sell it like that, right? If we go to the store, okay, we got the camera. So, yeah, sweet, I want to buy it. And it's a bundle, right? It adds on the bundle, 20 bucks. It's not a terrible price for it. You know, I want to make that point clear. It's not a terrible price. But it's confusing because this selfie stick is the one selfie stick that they have. And when I was watching videos on YouTube of people showing off how cool this camera was, back when, like the day of release, it looked like they were using the selfie stick. They're talking about the invisible selfie stick that you can buy, they can come with it, you can get this and that, whatever. Um, but nowhere do they mention that, hey, this only actually works with one or two products. It doesn't actually work with the product that we're going to bundle it with. I think this is something to be cautious about, and obviously it got me a little bit, that the way they do this kind of marketing, these kinds of companies are just kind of telling you what they only what you want to hear and nothing that you wouldn't want to hear. So, you know, I guess that's marketing in general, right? So, I mean, you see on their page, it's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's no way. This is never how it looks. I mean, that's just a fact. It never looks... The, the software is never looking this good. Uh, the preview window is nothing like that. I, The software that you can download, their Insta360 software, I'm going to do a separate small thing on that, is okay. Uh, I mean, I have DaVinci Resolve, so... I would rather use DaVinci Resolve, but for somebody who doesn't want to get too into the weeds on editing some of this stuff, I think it's kind of cool. I think they did an all right job with it. But in general, I don't know what they're going with in some of these things. I think they're just kind of omitting, right? Like, see here, you see you're using it. Uh, here, well, I don't know where this camera's mounted. I have no idea where this camera's mounted, right? So there's a lot of YouTube videos out there where people show you. See, this one, it doesn't have, but I can't zoom in on them. Can I zoom in on them? A little bit this guy on the left it's it's showing his selfie stick but that's my thing in the videos where some youtubers are reviewing this and they get their media packages this is why i specifically named my first like unbox or whatever for this as a retail review because you know some people get paid on youtube or wherever else to review products and some are very very upfront with what they will, what they can, what this and that, about what they can say about the product, about who's paying for what. Uh, and some are just not, right? They're just not. And this kind of happens a lot. It's really getting hard to tell. Like, just because you can put in a includes paid promotion doesn't mean that it's actually, you know, their full thoughts on something or they did a very in-depth review um, it doesn't mean that the company didn't get final approval on the video before they published it. That does happen in some of those contracts that I've seen. Uh, not that I'm getting any of those contracts, but you know what I mean. I know Mr. Mobile is very, very specific. If you ever watch any of his videos, that though sometimes these things are provided to him, he gives them no final say on publishing. He does not give them a video before publishing it. He does not receive any kind of compensation for, you know, view it or reviewing a phone or anything else. These kinds of things can be important. Because I think that the way that the software, the selfie stick, and everything else was kind of played up, it's not nearly as crazy as, you know, one would be led to, led to think. Um, I had medium expectations going into it. I do like it. I want I want that to be known. I, the stick is okay. I have it at my desk here. It, it's okay for a really small stick, 
Like if you just want to, a really small one, you can put in a backpack or a purse or, you know, in your car that maybe you're going to use it sometime. It's fine for that. It really is. But it also is just a straight stick with a little attachment at the top. That's it, right? So it doesn't have a tripod. Now you can mount it to a tripod, but that kind of defeats the purpose. It doesn't come with a remote because you're supposed to use your phone or the charging case as a remote. Okay, I guess that's fine. But with the, the only way to mount the camera to the selfie stick it comes with is to put it in the charging case and mount it to the selfie stick. So I guess you're supposed to carry your phone and then tell it when to snap. And that's the only place you can see your previews as well. You can't you know, turn it around and use the other, use like your rear camera on your phone like you normally would on a selfie stick if you wanted to view something in front of you. I know some selfie sticks out there, you can, you know, push a button and it'll flip cameras, right? Or you have other software or whatever else. So for what it is, it's cool. But knowing what it is, I think is the most important part. And that's kind of where the marketing falls short with this kind of stuff. And I mean, honestly, what I don't know what I expected. I I thought that it was going to be oh cool software work inside of the the app that they use because you have to export your files from the app before you can do anything with it. I tried to take just the straight files off the camera and put it even into their own software, and it just kept crashing. They like said I'll do more on that, but it just it just kept crashing. Right? There's really nothing I could do about it. Uh, and, of course, it comes out as a big circle. But I wanted to see what their software was all about. You can see here, there's lots of cool stuff you can do with it. So it's still a cool camera, but just kind of know what you're getting at. Know what you're getting with it. Know what you're actually looking for. And in some cases, know whether or not, hey, maybe a GoPro is a better option for you. Right? And it very well could be. If you want to do anything else other than these little things for short periods of time. Right? So I'm going to keep it, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to get a GoPro soon, too, because you could do more with it. This 150 minutes is super caveat. GoTo's charging time is 35 minutes. When use the, using with the charge case, GoTo can be used for 150 minutes under 1080p, 30fps, basic stabilization video settings. That is not even the default when you hit Go. Okay, I want that to be clear. The default, at least on mine, maybe you can change the default. The default, while it's connected, is 1440 flow stabilization, which I can only max out to 30 minute clips. And it gets super hot and even warns you not to do a full 30 minutes uh, in certain cooling conditions. So think about that. I mean, time lapse I had run for over two hours, and that's great. So there's caveats to each little piece. And a lot of the reviewers out there are not mentioning those caveats. They're not talking about it. And it's it's kind of annoying um, having to do your own research on top of it after you just watched a bunch of videos, which you should probably consider being the research for a product like this. Since you can't buy it in a store, you have to order it from China and let it go through customs and everything else. So, hey, not a buyer beware, but just know what you're getting. That's all I'd really say here because... When you go here, this is very specific on what things you can do at what frame rates, right? Uh, it does not mention how long, but you're not going to get more than 30 minutes battery at the 1440, 50 FPS kind of deal for flow state with pro video, all that kind of stuff. The, the less features you throw on it, the more battery you'll get. And that kind of just depends on what you're trying to do, right? Some things don't need flow state. They don't need stabilization at all some things right a time lapse whatever doesn't need that a hyper shift might need stabilization but probably doesn't need flow state so it's up to you but thanks for watching kind of a rant but i i kind of am disappointed in some people that put out certain videos and so have a good one